whew, this thing's got some fuel vapor in the air. This vehicle has an issue with starting and I can also smell fuel in the air. This has been a common problem on this vehicle, not this Toyota Camry in particular, but pretty much any fuel injected vehicle, you wanna start under the hood. The areas that you wanna pay attention to are typically going to be along the fuel rail, the fuel injectors, or even a fuel line of some sort. These are all common areas that could potentially have a leak. It might not necessarily be visible if the vehicle's been sitting for a while, but you might still find that you have fuel vapors. Looking up along the top of this engine, I don't really see very much of anything that I'm looking for, but if I look deep inside this area, I can see where the fuel injectors are. I don't see any moisture here, and I also don't smell any fuel vapors, so I'm really not worried about it on this. But on typical cars, it will be out in the open. You want to inspect that fuel rail, the fuel injectors, and as I mentioned, the line. There's something else that you want to pay attention to in this area, and that's a pressure release valve. It's typically going to be covered with a cover of some sort. Just go ahead and remove that, give it a quick sniff, and also make sure you don't see any liquid in there. If you see liquid, it's probably fuel, and if that valve needs to be fixed, go ahead and fix that. But we're not going to stop there. You also should check your fuel pressure with a specialty tool. You want to make sure that your pressure in the lines leading up to your fuel injectors is proper. Go ahead and check your manufacturer's specifications and ensure that it's where it needs to be. Let's continue on under the vehicle. Definitely smell fuel under here. Along the back of the vehicle is where you're typically going to find your fuel tank. This is going to be one of the areas that we want to focus on, but keep in mind, just because the fuel pump's located inside the fuel tank doesn't necessarily mean that that's where the issue is going to lie. It could be a possibility, and we are going to take a look, but before we start taking anything apart, let's continue looking at things that we can see. In between your fuel tank and the engine up along the front of the vehicle, there's going to have to be lines that transfer the fuel that's pressurized all the way up into the engine compartment to your fuel rail and eventually to those fuel injectors. When installing your lines, you want to pay close attention to them. Sometimes they're going to be covered with things, other times they're going to be out in the open. This one actually did have a cover on it at one point in time, but the vehicle's kind of old, it looks like the cover's been removed, and it looks like the lines have been repaired. You have to pay close attention for any repairs on fuel lines or even brake lines. On these fuel lines, I can see that somebody used unions or joints, whatever you want to call them here, to try to hold the lines together instead of just replacing the entire line leading from up at the fuel injector all the way down to that fuel pump unit. It can be a little bit of a pain, so people will try to take the easy way out and add something like what you can see here. Of course, if you end up needing any parts, whether it's the lines, fuel injectors, a fuel pump, or even a fuel tank, check us out at oneauto.com and we'll be sure to ship that out to you fast and free. Let's continue on with our diagnosis. We'll follow these lines right on down along the back here. I can see rubber hose making its way all the way along the fuel line here, along the back of the vehicle to that fuel tank. You wanna be extremely careful if you're replacing steel line with rubber hose. A couple things to pay attention to is the fact that the rubber hose is going to be a lot more flexible than the line and it could potentially hang down. I can see this one right here, it's hanging down. It could potentially get caught on something. Other things you wanna pay attention to about the hose is you wanna make sure it has a proper pressure rating and it is fuel rated as well. Some hoses will start to break down if they have something like fuel running around them or through them. You definitely don't wanna have a fuel leak. A quick note about a couple different types of leaks. You might have a liquid leak or even a vapor leak. If you have a vapor leak, commonly your vehicle will start and even run, but you might find that you have a check engine light and an EVAP code. You really wanna pay attention for that. Fuel vapors are combustible. Aside from that, if you had a liquid leak, you had fuel dripping out of the lines or out of the fuel tank or pretty much anywhere else. You might find that the vehicle cracks, but it does not wanna start. You could find a puddle underneath the vehicle, and if the vehicle did happen to start, it might start to run like it has a misfire, not have very much power, and of course, you might find that you have that check engine light just like before. Let's remove this clamp and carefully get the hose off of here. I want to pay close attention. There's something that I want to show you that some people don't even really think about when they're doing something like this, even if it is a temporary fix. When you're putting a hose on here, you want to ensure that it can't slide off. The person did use two clamps, which is a good habit, but something that we really want to pay attention to, I'll carefully remove this, could be a little bit of fuel pressure in here. Look at the line. You can see exactly where they cut it, but they didn't put anything at the tip here to try to prevent the hose from sliding off, even with those clamps on there. Typically, you want to try to use a flaring kit and at least make some sort of little bobble at the end. So once you do put the clamps on, there's no way this hose can come loose. Have a look just to the side of the fuel line. 
An exhaust can get extremely hot, and if you had a leak here that just happened to be squirting in this direction, fuel on hot exhaust, go ahead and use your imagination on that one. It's a safety issue, and we want to prevent that no matter what. Huh. Look at that. More joints and unions making their way all the way down along the back. The next area that we'll talk about moving from those lines is going to be talking about the fuel tank and what's located inside the fuel tank. On some vehicles, you'll find that the fuel tank's made out of metal. Other times, it's going to be made out of plastic. But commonly, along the top of the fuel tank, where your fuel pump assembly and everything's going to go into, there's going to be some sort of metal ring. Anything metal that happens to have moisture that sits on it for a long period of time is typically going to rust in some way. So if you find you have fuel vapors in the air, but you can't actually see any drips or any liquid on the ground, it's commonly up above the fuel tank. It's really hard to see. We're gonna have to get this down and we'll have a closer look. Some vehicles are going to have a trap door just underneath the rear seat. You should be able to dislodge it. And typically you'll be able to have a quick peek along the top of the fuel tank, but you can only see a small amount. We'll look at this more when we get the tank out of the vehicle. When bringing the fuel tank down, you're typically going to have to dislodge the fuel filler neck from either the fuel tank or up at the body of the vehicle. Sometimes the fuel filler neck isn't necessarily going to be out in the open. This one is, so we can have a close look. These are going to be made out of metal, and you want to pay attention to see if it looks like they're rotted, flaking, or weak in any way. If you have even a small pinhole in this, you may find you have a fuel leak dripping out every time you fill up. Otherwise, you might just happen to have fuel vapor in the air. Pay close attention to your fuel filler neck. Another place to look for a fuel smell that involves the fuel filler neck is right behind the door. Remove the cap. Once you have your fuel cap dislodged, we'll be paying attention to the seal. Look at that. If your fuel cap seal looks like this, you're typically not going to have a liquid leak coming out because the fuel shouldn't be this high, but you could have a vapor leak and that's going to at least cause a check engine light. You wanna go ahead and replace that cap. All right, at this point, we can start lowering the tank down. Let's have a quick look along the top. Just move things around as necessary. Ooh, I see something already. And I got a strong smell of fuel. Look at that. Now let's get this down so we can have a closer look. Oh man, it's drenched all up along the top of the tank here. A couple reasons why you might have fuel residue up along the top of the tank typically is either due to rust or rot. As I mentioned before, if you happen to have a metal fuel tank like this here, otherwise typically in between the fuel sending unit and the fuel tank itself, there has to be some sort of gasket. Along the top of the tank where I can see the majority of this area that looks like it's moist, it's really not very rotted. So I'm not super worried about that, but I am worried about the fact that there is definitely fuel up along the top of this area and we need to continue our diagnosis on this. It seems as though it's starting to come from along this area where the fuel sending unit is. So we're going to start removing that so we can have a close look at the gasket itself. But while we're here, let's continue having a look all the way around the fuel tank. I can see there's a lot of rust and rot making its way around. Ooh, that's another spot. Let's get this out of place. We'll remove the mounting hardware holding it down. I'm using a Phillips head screwdriver. As we continue lifting this up, Keep in mind, there could still be fuel in this area depending on the level of the fuel inside the tank. We don't want anything making its way out and potentially getting in your eyes or on your hands. Start lifting this up and out of here. We're paying attention to where our level sensor is here, the float, and we also have our strainer down along the bottom. We'll set this aside in a collection receptacle. At this point, we want to look for that gasket that I mentioned. Sometimes it's going to be on the tank itself. Other times you might happen to find it on the sending unit assembly. In our case, it's still kind of stuck on here. We'll pull it off so we can have a close look. Oh man. I'd say we definitely found an issue here. I can see this gasket is completely cracked. More than likely it's at minimum allowing vapor to make its way out. But as you fill up the fuel tank, you might actually find that a little bit of the liquid fuel makes its way out as well, along through all this dry rotted cracks, and it's making its way down along the top of the fuel tank. You could take a quick peek underneath your vehicle and see what you can see, but something along the top of the tank is almost impossible to see unless you had some sort of mirror or a different way to see up above, unless of course you wanted to drop the tank like what we did here. Imagine if I didn't drop the tank and I only stopped at looking at those lines which we saw didn't look good at all, 
the filler neck, which also didn't look good. We just replaced those. We went ahead and filled up the tank and we still have a fuel smell coming from the area. We have to re-diagnose it and all this just takes a whole bunch of extra time. Just order everything that you need from oneauto.com and we'll ship it out to you fast and free.